Hi, this is Jason from Effective Maintenance Dashboards. And in this video here, we're going to continue on from the previous video. So this is actually part two of the video on adding a minimum and maximum point or adding or highlighting the minimum and maximum points on a line graph. So I did this in the previous video, then I thought actually there's there's some other information I think we can we can add into this to really sort of make this graph come alive. So I've made a part two of this video. So the next thing we're going to do is the first thing that um, that, that really, we've got these these values here, but they don't really jump out at us and we really want to, to be explicit about what they are. So the, the option we've got is if we go in here, we can add in some data labels and you can see they'll appear and they're on here, but it starts to look a little bit cluttered with these data labels on here. We're interested in the trend over time, and we can see here, broadly speaking, where we're sort of stable. And then we had a couple of weeks where we were at a high point, then fall by a low point, and then came back on track. But then um, came back to um, a point in between the sort of high and low point. So we can, we don't need to know the values, but we do want to know the highs and lows. So what we can do is we can first of all go in here and go to this section here, this analytic section. So not every visualization has got this section, but a line chart does. And it's got some pretty neat features here. Now, if the first first thing we can do is we can add back in the trend line. So we did cover this in a previous video. So you click on the trend line and just click add. And we're just going to change that to be slightly subtler. And that trend line is just there to let us see the overall trend between the start and end points of the, the date range. The next thing we're going to add in is going to be the um, a line that's going to show you the high point and the low point, just to make it completely completely clear what these two values are. So let's go to this one here, which is the um, the minimum line. Let's start with the minimum line. So we open this up, click on add, and again we call it. Now this is annoying. It actually you'll see it. It tends to. Um, so always default back to the top, the top line here, the trend line. But let's just um, go with this for just now. So we can see this here, and is the um, minimum number of the orders. Right. And the measure we're going to show there is only one. If you had a few measures you could decide which um, which measure you wanted to show on if this this if this line chart had maybe had a, another couple of measures on it, maybe an, an average or a percentage or something like that. You could choose which one you wanted to trend. Now colour. So we're going to go back and I'm going to choose the same colour as this colour here. I want to keep consistency. So see it's jumped back up to that trend line. Um, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose a custom colour and the colour I'm going to choose is going to be if I can remember I think it was this one here you see it's um, it's not making it easy for this to, to enter this colour here let's just type that in 1339E Right, okay, so we can see it's the same colour as that, or almost the same colour. Let's go back to this constant line. The only difference is it's got transparency, so we want zero transparency. Now, that's exactly the same colour here. Now, the reason that I um, I chose this min number of work orders is that when you scroll down here, you can choose a type of line. A dash line is fine for us. You've got this label data label option and you can turn that on and once you turn it on you've got a few additional options appear and these can help you to create consistency between the color of the dot the color of the trend and the actual label here so we're going to choose the text to be you can choose the checks checks to be the value the name that was minimum number of min number of work orders. So it just jumps up there. So annoying. 
um, and then this one here. So that's what we want. We want the name and the value. Minimum number of work orders is 670. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and make that the same colour as the other one. So we go back in here. We don't need to, we've got that colour there. I think that was a colour. Is it one nine? No. So we'll go back to custom colour. Then we look at so we'll call that one one nine three three nine e. There we go. Right, so now we've got consistency between the text and the colours. And we can do the same for the top. So I'll just pause this while I go in and um, configure the top one for the map. Okay, so I've added in the top line. So I've done exactly the same. Just gone in and selected the conditional formatting options here, or the the, um, the analysis options here. So we've now got a trend line, a minimum line, and a maximum line. So that now makes it a bit more explicit as to what the um, what the boundaries were and what the values were. The next thing I want to do is now go and get uh, the. I want to make it um, make it clear what date range we're looking at here. Okay, we can't see here. So, um, because we've used them, um, just how the, the, the chart's set up. So if I go in and just cover this, when you go into the x-axis, you can choose the type. We've chose continuous, which is great for the date range. You can choose categorical, which would give you a date for each one of these, but it doesn't look particularly great. That's more if you're using them um, categories. So if you were to look at the number of work orders by a work type or the number of work orders by a discipline, so it doesn't automatically default to the first value there. It kind of tries to space these out across the um, across the um, across the x-axis. So I want to update this title to show the start and end dates in the date range, and we can do that using conditional formatting. Okay, so I'm going to go and create a new. Um, a new measure, and I'm going to create that in the yeah, create in the work order variables table. And this measure is going to get the date of the first and last values where within here where there's where there's where there's actually a backlog value. Okay, so we're going to call this one. Let's go for let's go let's start with the last last date. Of last date, um, last data in trend, and it's going to be equal to, and it's going to be. I'm going to use this last non blank, and right, so last non blank takes a column. And it applies an expression, and the column name that we're going to look at is going to be the dates table, and it's going to be dates. But the important thing here is that we are only interested in the dates that are selected as part of this particular visual. So we're going to use the all selected. We're going to wrap all selected around this date dates. Um, and then we're going to go and find the last non-blank, all selected dates, dates, and it's going to be um, backlog count. And let's take it away. No, 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 that's not working here. We forgot to put a, a close bracket here. This should work now. Yeah, battle count. And then we'll close that off. So that is going to go and um, last non blank is going to look through the all selected dates, dates, which is going to be all the dates along the bottom here. Now, the reason we've selected this all selected is if we go and filter by the date here, it will only take these dates into account. And it's going to get the, the last value. Where there is a backlog, okay. So where there is a backlog, so the dates table that we've got is um, 
is a, 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 an extensive range. I think it goes through to 2024 or something like that. So we only want the, the last value here where there is a value um, of battle count. So let's just check to see if that's worked. So to check that, I'm going to click on a blank page here, blank, uh, click off of this chart anyway, and then I'm going to add in this, and then I'm going to type in last here, and we should find it. There we go. Last date with date data. That should be data. Let's just rename, click on here, we can rename that. Last date with data and trend. And we go and pull that into here, and that should be the 31st of March. There we go. Perfect. Right, so we're going to go and create the same uh, measure, but we're going to get the first date. So I'll pause the video while we do that. Okay, so we can see we have created the other one, which is the first date. So I just need to click on, click on it. And we'll first date with data. And that's just using the first non blank for the state range for a value which has got a battle count. Right, so we don't need these anymore. They were just there to. Um, to identify that the, or to just to verify that the, the measure was working correctly. So let's remove those and let's create another measure. So this is a conditional format of measure this time. And this is going to be a measure that we're going to use to um, to build up our title that we're going to use here. So it's going to be a title that's going to um, have some text that's going to tell us the start and end date for the graph, the P that the graph is showing. So we're going to call this one here Conditional formatting and work order that log graph title text and it's going to be equals. I'm going to say the work order. And between, I'm going to close that. Now we're going to add in this, and it's going to be whatever that measure was. What was it again? Start. No. First, okay, we've got bat log first value in range. And then we're going to go and add in. And sign. And an and sign, and we'll call this last value in range. Let's just check that it's okay. So work order trend between um, work order that log trend between the first date in the range and the last date in the range. Okay, so I think that's fine. Look we'll the that log graph type of text. So then we go in to highlight this graph here. Go into this part here, and if we go to the title, you can see that's a de that's the the text that's there by default. We've got a conditional formatting options there. And this will pop up with the conditional formatting box. And we're going to choose the field value, which is the only option here. And let's type in title. And that will find it. Ah, hold on a second. What's happened here? First name blank. Let's return the actual measure value. I think I've added the wrong values into the, the title text. Hold on. Let's check here. 
bottler count, it's not the bottler count, it's the date. Uh, bat log, max point, yeah, max point. First date with data, there we go. This is the one I need. And this one here is going to be the last, last point with data. So apologies, a little bit of a, a mix up there, but that should hopefully so it's a yep between the first of the third and the thirty first of the third. Now just before we end this video here, what I'd like to do is just show you how you can format these. I think it actually reads better if you've got a date like this, if it's actually the the words rather than um, particularly for the month. Um, rather than the actual date, like like the um, like the format we've got here, so let's go into conditional format and measure. And what you can do is you can wrap this in a measure, um, a, a function called format. And then you've got the format here, and then in here you can put in the format. So you put it into inverted um, inverted commas. And we will format this one to be the date, and then we'll put month, so four ends, and then we'll put year. Okay. And let's just see what that looks like, because I think that would be the one day, oh, something not quite right there. Uh, format trend. Oh, maybe these values there. There we go. Just needed an extra little comma there. Yeah, between the first of, first of March two thousand and nineteen, and we'll put the same format string on the end date. And open that up there. One, two, three, four, space, y, 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 y. And I will create another video explaining how this format works and the different options you can you can choose. But for just now, we can see that, yeah. So work on a backlog trend between the 1st of March 2019 and the 31st of March 2019. You can see here that we've got consistency between the colors here. So the max number of the work orders in Batlog was, was 714. You can look along and see that. So it's telling a bit of a story. And then the minimum number of work orders was was, um, was um, 670, and it happened on that date. Now the final thing that I would do with this is I'd also explicitly state that these are the current values, because we've got a trend here. So in my mind, I'm thinking, was well, that the first value, the last value, or, or whatever? So just a quick change here, make that slightly wider, and just go in and format the title there. In fact, actually, you can do it here. Current work order backlog. And that just is, is explicit there. And then we'll do the same here. We would normally make sure these are exactly the same size and it's current hours in backlog. Okay, so hopefully this is starting to develop a little bit of um, a little bit more um, of a richer kind of um, line graph. Sometimes if you just plunk one in the middle of the screen, it's not going to be particularly great. Um, but we've got some more we can add into this, and I will cover that in another video. But for now, we've got the min value, we've got the max value, we've got a trend, we've got these highlighted, we've done a bit of conditional format in here to make the, the title dynamic if we were to change this. And um, thanks for listening, and I will talk to you in the next video.